from this lovely Lord's Day. We are so thankful that we can gather today and that uh, earlier in the week we heard that it was going to have about a 55-60% chance of rain and almost cancelled. So thank God we did not and thank God for the good weather, right? Um, ask you to mark your calendars for a few uh, events that are coming up. Uh, on October 24th, Saturday night, we will be doing a spaghetti dinner again, a fundraiser for our youth. Uh, it will be curbside pickup, as we did the last time, and we ask that if you have a large order, like 10 
uh, five or ten meals that you would uh, like to have that you please let us know in advance so that we can get those uh, ready for you and you don't have to wait. Um, please look at the, uh, watch Mandarin Messenger for more information on that. Also on October 25th, we are going to have a congregational meeting. Exactly how we're gonna do that. Uh, we will determine this afternoon at our council meeting. So uh, please look for more information on that as well. I wanna also thank you uh, for all the donations uh, that were made uh, for our Halloween goodie bags and also for the Thanksgiving boxes. We will be getting those prepared and delivered um, in time. Also today, we want to thank those who made uh, NICU blankets and other blankets for Project Linus and pillowcases for the victims uh, of the wildfires. So um, thanks to all who, who sewed and knitted, and we will do a blessing of that right before the offertory prayer. Um, as you may know by now, we have started with our stewardship drive. Today is the kickoff, and to kick us off, I'm going to invite Greg Rhodes to come and talk to us. Good morning. Good morning. So, Troy reached out to me a week or so ago and asked if I would consider talking, doing a temple talk about stewardship and more to the point about stewardship in my life and what the ministry and my faith, move closer to the mics. what my faith and my, my ministry, the ministry here at, at, at MLC mean to me. So as I thought about that, a number of things resonated and went through my, my mind and this word kept coming up again and again and again. Closed. It's a phrase we've heard far too often in the last eight months. Schools closed. Work closed, or maybe work from home. Restaurants closed. Sports closed. Church closed. Stay home, quarantine. Keep each other safe. I understand and I agree and I get it and I complied and I have, have followed the rules like everyone else. We, we, we still are. But this word resonated with me beyond just the signs that I see everywhere I go. In each case, when something is closed, the exchange is disrupted. The giving and the receiving, the sharing is disrupted. And I think this affects our lives as well. And I think about the word closed in our lives. Closed minds that can't see other views or can't learn. Closed mouths that should speak and give encouragement but don't. Closed eyes that don't see. Closed arms that can't hug or be held. Closed hands that can't receive and can't give. And closed hearts that can't share your love or receive the love of others. Are you living with a closed mentality in your life? I know sometimes I do. It's a challenge. This week I was with Rob and I told him sometimes I got to put Greg in the box. Greg needs Greg's time by myself and I think that's okay even Christ was called to withdraw and spend time alone but we are called to be open not to be closed so as I was thinking about stewardship and particularly what MLC means to me it's this friends we're blessed we truly are blessed if you are here and we are, are, are living and we're gathering to experience God's love and worship. We are blessed. Now, make no mistake, we're challenged as well. I don't know your challenges. 
and you don't know mine. But I do know this. If you have Christ in your heart, you're a brother and a sister with me. And the promise of eternal life, regardless of your struggles here on earth. November 17th, 2000, was a day that most people would dread. Today I lost my job. I lost my job, but it really was a prayer that was answered. I was downsized after 12 years with a Fortune 100 company, a company that had promoted me, that had moved me to suit their needs. To be fair, a company that educated me and was good to me. But I was slotted to go into a job that did not match my gifts and my talents, and I knew it was wrong. So I volunteered for a buyout. The God answered my prayer and I got it. So I started December 1st with a business with no clients, nothing in the bank, but I had the love of my wife, my family, my friends, and most importantly, the love of my God. 20 years. So for the first 10 years of my business, Every January, I would put up a wall calendar and I would stare at 365 empty boxes and I would be overcome with fear. God, where will the work come from? Who will call me? What will I do? How will I feed my family? And I would pray hard, please fill my empty boxes. And you know, I'm a slow learner, but after 10 years, I realized staring at that calendar he would fill my boxes. The phone would ring. Now I got to get after it every day and I do and I thank God for the ability to do that but he's given me wonderful opportunity. I've learned not to let empty boxes and a closed mind keep me from moving forward. So I also know this. I know that I need God in my life. I know that I need forgiveness of my sins, the sins that Jesus purchased with his life. I need the comfort of the Holy Spirit when I'm in fear and afraid. I need this place with that steeple shining in the light. And if you haven't driven by late at night and looked up and seen that clean white spire with the light that doesn't touch your heart, I ask you to take a second look. Or the light when it shines through the stained glass window when we're together in the sanctuary and the air is filled with music and you can feel the love in the room. I need that. The church is my anchor and it's my sail. It's my anchor because I am the Gentile that Jesus talked about. I am the Samaritan. I'm the woman at the well. I'm the hungry on the hillside that was fed. I am the Gentile, the non-Jew that Christ opened up God's kingdom for. And I, I, I sincerely feel that link through history. I feel my grandparents' hands on my shoulders. If I look quick enough behind, I swear I can see my mom and dad in the pew behind. That's my anchor. This place is my anchor. You people are my anchor. But it's also my sail. It's my sail because it gives me the confidence and the courage to go out into the world to do the service that I need to do, that I was called to do, to serve God's people. And because of that, I've seen the Holy Spirit in amazing places, on airplanes, meeting rooms, at fires, at hunting camps, at kitchen tables, in Ubers, in just a hundred other places where God's revealed to me and I can share and I can receive. My friends, I would encourage you to live with an open mentality. Open your mind, open your hearts, open your hands. God has richly blessed me and I know he's blessed you. Stewardship is not just about money. It's our time, our talents, and our possessions. All of what God has first given us. I would encourage you as we're going through our stewardship campaign Prayerfully consider what you have and the blessings you've received and how you can respond 
to God's love and God's grace through our service here. God's touched me, and he's touched me through you, and I thank you for that over many, many years. You've prayed with me, you've cried with me, you've held me in my family, and that means more than you know. So as we go into this spirit of stewardship, live with an open mentality. God is good all the time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah 25. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Poor will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Philippians 4. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So their wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know um, how much you watch TV and especially how much you watch ads uh, these days when we are watching through Netflix or Hulu or whatever there is always an opportunity to fast forward through the ads but a few years ago Verizon started advertising that they are America's best network during one of their ads they had a competitor's voice come on and say how, no, they are the best and they offer this. And every time they said what they offered, there would be a, a sound, a, a bell ringing, and then there would be a big asterisk. And the asterisk would uh, then pop up with a, um, yeah, but this is what they also do, you know. So it was a it was a good ad for Verizon, uh, you know, really bashing their competitors. Then about three years later, Spectrum decided to use the asterisk as well, and they said that everyone promises the best that they are the best, but that they have that. And every time they did that, the asterisk would come up and they would show that, oh yeah, but you have to have a two-year contract or you have early termination fees or, you know, I think they were successful at because we understand the asterisk. We understand the fine print. We understand the speed speaker at the end because I think we have all been taken in by the hype at one point or another uh, and taken in by the fine print, not listening or reading the fine print. Why I tell you this is because I think this gospel lesson today has a couple of asterisks that we have to look at. When you read the gospel, there is the temptation to just take it at face value. We have the story. The king has a wedding banquet. The guests are invited, but they don't come. The second time they invited, they not only don't come, but they start killing off and mistreating the, the servants. The king is enraged, so he sends his troops to go and kill those murderers.
And then he sends out an invitation to the streets, to all who would come. This parable is found both in Matthew and in Luke. Matthew's account of this parable, however, has the second little part to it. Once the guests are all seated in the banquet hall, the king comes into the banquet hall and he finds one person without a wedding robe on. Where is the asterisk? Where is the fine print found? Because the king says to this guy, friend, how did you get in here? Now there's one Bible commentator that says it's never a good thing in Matthew when Jesus addresses you as friend because what comes after that's not good. However, I remember the days where this parable and this part of the parable really puzzled me. I mean, after all, this guy was invited, right? But you see, he offended the king because it was the custom of those days that the king would provide robes for all the guests. And this guest was too prideful or arrogant or too sure of himself to wear the robe that was offered to him. However, his pride and his self-righteousness did him no good because when the king came to him and asked him, he had no answer for the king. So let's take a look at this parable. Of course, the banquet is the kingdom of God. The king is God. At first he invites people at his own discretion. Those who are, of course, the Israelites. The messengers are the prophets of old. As I said, the guests were the Jews, the Israelites at first. But the guests are also us. And you know, the interesting thing that I found here is not that the guests declined the king because something major happened in their lives or their circumstances changed and now they couldn't make it to the banquet anymore no they didn't go simply because they decided to go about the ordinary daily lives as normal it was such an insult to the king. They gave up some blessing, a big blessing, for something much less. Well, we also see after the second invitation that their reaction is bad and they not only decline, but they kill and mistreat the prophets. My question is this, why? Why did they do that? Why did they the second time also not just ignore the messengers? Perhaps Jesus is saying to us that there are only two responses to God's invitation. One response is to humbly accept God's invitation to enter the kingdom of God or the second choice is to reject God and the messengers of the good news. So here's the fine print. Here's my first asterisk. An invitation from God is not to be taken trivially. An invitation from God has eternal implications. Should we ignore that invitation, we do so at our own peril. But there's also good news in this. 
parable because we see that God doesn't give up. He sends out the servants with an invitation. Then he sends out more and then he sends them out again. The third time though, he sends the invitation to everyone in the streets whom they can find. God's grace is for everyone because everyone needs it. There's one person who pretended to be a guest who came into the banquet hall but thought that he didn't need the robe of the king, that he was good enough. He was self-righteous. But when he was questioned, he had nothing to say for, to him, for himself. My friends, at the end of the day, our pride is not enough. We cannot save ourselves. And so here I come to my second asterisk, the fine print in this, what we can find implied in here is that God's grace, God's love, God's righteousness is a gift, a big gift to us. We don't deserve it. We cannot earn it. We simply have to receive it sincerely. So last year, Sprint came up with a new commercial and they said that 100% total satisfaction guarantee. They will give you your money back if you are not satisfied. And then they said this, simply try it out and see for yourself. The people receiving the king's invitation had nothing to lose. They had everything to gain. Those who responded in humility and thankfulness had the time of their lives and their lives were changed forever. Not because of what they brought to the banquet, but because of what they received from the king. The feast is prepared. God is still inviting the people of the world, everyone, to come to the banquet. Today we find ourselves both guests who have received that invitation, but also servants who are called to go out into the world so that others too can receive the invitation of God's grace and love. There's no small print in this calling. There's no asterisk here. There's only grace, love, compassion. Today we answer two questions for ourselves. Will you exchange your dirty rags for God's robe of righteousness and salvation? If your answer to that is yes, then there's a second question. Will you show others the way to do the same? Amen.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with the spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to the table, to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers and who see to their needs. We pray especially for all of our first responders and those who work with the public. All who are suffering from COVID-19, especially Deborah, William, Erica, and baby Liam, for Becky Hughes, for President Mr. Mrs. Trump, for their caregivers, and for all families who have lost loved ones due to COVID. For all of our church leaders, especially Bishop Eaton, Bishop Suarez, and our Synod staff. For our congregation leaders, as they discern the path forward in this time of pandemic. For all members of our congregation, that we remain healthy during this difficult time. For all who are affected by the wildfires, hurricanes, and tropical storms. For all victims of violence, prejudice, and injustice, and all families who have lost loved ones due to violence and prejudice. For all those recovering from surgery, especially Don Conway and Marilyn Susson. For all those who are undergoing cancer treatments, especially Taylor Rebitzer and four-year-old Riley Faith in South Carolina. For all those suffering from cancer or other serious medical conditions, including Tess Hart, Brian Kennedy, Wayne Hendricks, Thomas Alford, Linda Emmel, Anna Kalin, Roy Miller, Chris Dickman, Irene Winter, Barb Smith, and Dolores Enos, and her husband Ron as he supports her. For all those who are grieving the death of their loved ones, for all those who need encouragement in your healing presence, especially Sue Mendenhall, Gladys, Hal, Dave, Wayne, Isaac, Nick Drexel, Michael Froder, John Weber, Leah, Debbie, Michael, Michelle Pargo, Sonia Wolf, Jim Glassman, his players, and Fred Schobert and all those who are homebound due to COVID-19 or other causes, especially Betty Bursecki, David Keister, Miss Charlotte, Robin Talbot, and all those who we mentioned in our hearts and on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, 
when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Lord, in your mercy. Be our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy. Be our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As our ushers prepare to uh, receive the offering, I want to thank you once again for your generosity and for your faithfulness in this time of pandemic. I know that uh, it's difficult sometimes to keep up with our giving at, as we would like to because of changed circumstances. However, I want you to know that uh, we are still making a difference in people's lives as we have made blankets and pillowcases and uh, collected school supplies and food um, out there in the world. It's made a difference to a child or to a person's life. So thank you. Keep up the good work. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, today we are thankful for the gifts that you have given people to be able to create and make items that will bring comfort to others. I pray that you will bless our sit and stitch group as uh, they try to come up with ways to be a blessing to others. And Lord, also now we bless these items that they made so that those who receive them will experience your love through that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, 
and he gave thanks and gave it to all saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me remembering therefore his death resurrection and ascension we await his coming in glory pour out upon us the spirit of your love O lord and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit be all honor and glory now and forever amen gathered into one by the holy spirit let us pray as jesus taught us our, our father, father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen come to the banquet table where christ gives himself as food and drink Once again, I remind you to just hold on to your uh, communion kit until we express the words, this is the body of Christ and this is the blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond of compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and held by the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Be safe.